CMHC is out with its newest Canadian housing market outlook, and they're saying home prices in Canada are going up. Hey there, and welcome back to Bald Prairie Real Estate. My name is Matthew Fife for Real Estate in Regina. That's my trusted assistant, Matilda. This is a weekly news recap where I go through the most interesting Canadian real estate related news topics, give my thoughts and opinions on them. We're going to jump right into it with a terrible bad dad joke. What happens when you cross a snowman and a vampire? You get frostbite. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, let me know in the comments below. Let's get into this week's Canadian real estate related news. Real quick pause here. If you're thinking about buying a house in Regina, obviously I'd love to help you out, but if you're somewhere else in Canada, don't worry, I can get you set up with a perfect real estate agent that I'll handpick for you. If you check out the description of this video, you're gonna see a link to my calendar where you can book me in for an agent recommendation consultation. I'll give you a call, learn about what's important to you in a house, in a real estate agent, and I'll get you set up with that perfect agent in your market. And now let's get back to the video. We'll start off talking about the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcement. As pretty much everybody expected, including all of you that answered my poll question, the Bank of Canada held its interest rate once again. And if you again read through and kind of listen to what the Bank of Canada is saying, they're very clearly saying that they want to continue to see the progress with inflation working its way down before they do anything. They know that their words are very powerful and many times it's more powerful than their actions. So they're not gonna say, hey, we're gonna drop interest rates next time. They're gonna continue to say we're holding and we're watching things as long as possible because they want consumers to stop spending money. They would prefer the government would stop spending money too. That's making their job harder but they know they can't just go out and say, we're going to reduce interest rates. They're gonna wait and then they're just gonna come out and say, now we're reducing interest rates. So don't expect the Bank of Canada to likely telegraph that rate cuts are coming, but it does seem that they're starting to get ready to at least consider that. I still don't think we're gonna see rate cuts until June the earliest, which is of course the next meeting. We'll have to wait and see if that's what happens. Next two topics here, we're talking about the federal government's plans for housing in Canada. The first program the government announced was $6 billion in funding for housing. This is gonna to go to the provinces and if the provinces don't play ball, they're gonna go directly to the municipalities. I asked a couple of weeks ago, how exactly the federal government thought they were going to implement their renter's bill of rights, which I still think is a lot of hot air, not actually gonna see the light of day but because the renting and tenancy laws, property laws, everything like that is all provincial regulation, not federal regulation. Well, the way they're gonna do it is they're basically gonna strong arm the provinces into adopting it. They're gonna say, if you don't adopt this renter's bill of rights, you don't get the money. They're also gonna make it mandatory to adopt some of the updates to the national building code. Many provinces already have, and they're gonna make it mandatory that basically single family zoning is gone. Everything has to be automatically zoned up to a fourplex. They also want the provinces and municipalities to reduce fees and taxes on new development. Interestingly enough, the federal government is not doing the same thing. I've talked about it in a previous video, which you can find in one of those fancy pop-up cards, how CMHC has now basically become the federal government's way of generating revenue for first-time homebuyers. They also announced a $400 million top-up to the multi-billion dollar housing accelerator fund that has been talked about for a couple of years. They've been running around the country promising all this money. There really hasn't been much built though with all these billions of dollars in housing promised. Next, the federal government is launching a $15 billion apartment construction loan program. So $15 billion, a lot of money. Glad to see it again. The federal government seems to finally be committing to getting more housing built in Canada. It only took them trailing the polls by 20 points to realize this was a problem. But let's do some quick table math here because they want 30,000 apartments to be built with this money. That's $500,000 per unit for construction. That to me just seems like an awfully expensive apartment to get built in. Again, if the federal government, which is continuing to say they're you know, working for the middle class and helping first time home buyers buy houses, that's a really expensive first time home buyer purchase if that's the construction price. Obviously, it's gonna be higher when it comes to sale prices. And then they're gonna have $55 billion allocated as part of this program in its entirety to see 131,000 new apartments being built or $1.1 million per unit. I actually really hope I am missing something here. Again, basic table math here, but I hope I'm wrong somewhere in this because $1.1 million to build an apartment is outrageous. And that just sounds like an awful lot of money being wasted. I am happy though the federal government finally has realized that we need to get more housing built. I just hope this doesn't turn into an absolute sham program where billions of dollars end up being wasted. The federal government is making changes to mortgage amortizations, allowing 30 year mortgages in Canada. This was being rumored for the last couple of weeks and the federal government was kind of teasing. They were gonna talk about the budget and all of a sudden, 
out of the blue, they dropped this on us on a Thursday and I talked about it in a short. I want to quickly add on to some of the things I talked about in that short because there's a few things that I missed. And the key details are you can have a third year amortization if you're a first time home buyer and you're using less than 20% down, so an insured mortgage, and you're buying a new construction property. This only applies, that's the key thing I missed in that short was I didn't say it was for new construction only. Quick little history lesson though for you, in the 2000s, you could do 40 year mortgages in Canada, and then they slowly started ratcheting that down actually, and then in 2012, insured mortgages could be no longer than 25 years, uninsured can be 30 years and that still continues to this day. This is a little bit of a good news, bad news policy here because on one hand, it's gonna drop your monthly mortgage payment by about 8%, which would enable some buyers who don't qualify right now to just sneak in and qualify for a mortgage. It also allows purchasers to increase their purchase price as well, but you're gonna pay a lot in interest for us. So quick table math here. I've just fixed interest rates at 5.25% for this illustration here again i know interest rates aren't fixed for 30 years but just kind of hang with me here for the example you spend seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. you put 10 percent down your interest costs over 25 years about five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. if you instead offer for a 30-year mortgage that becomes six hundred and sixty thousand dollars in interest that you have to pay so as i said it's kind of a good news and bad news policy it may allow some buyers to qualify to make a purchase it's going to allow other buyers to spend even more which likely is gonna create potentially even more demand for people looking to buy. This is probably a short-term solution and I really don't think it's a great solution to the core problem, which of course is the lack of housing. I've talked about that a lot previously and I'm glad that the government is starting to address this, but this is a little more of a band-aid temporary solution. Now let's talk about CMHC's housing market outlook and their predictions on the Canadian real estate market. If you are basing your decision on a forecast coming true, yet don't have a plan to buy a house anymore, you have a hope of something coming true. You buy a house when it makes sense for your own personal situation. You buy the best house and you get the best deal you can at that time. Don't wait for a prediction to come true to buy a house, guys. Just don't do it. It's not a good plan. But let's talk about what CMHC is forecasting for the Canadian real estate market. They go with through 2024 all the way through to 2026. As always, I will link the article below or the report below so you can dig through it yourself and kind of read through all the predictions. There's some pretty interesting ones here. Now, I've been critical of CMHC in the past. They have had some very pessimistic, kind of really off base predictions, but they've had kind of a shakeup in leadership and things seem to have been a little bit more reasonable in their recent forecasts. So again, take this with a little bit of grain of salt here. They are projecting, again, they've kind of got their most optimistic, their baseline scenario, and their most pessimistic. And in their baseline scenario, they're actually expecting that home prices in Canada will basically end 2024 at the peaks of 2022 prices. I'm not sure we're gonna see that, but that's CMHC's forecast with them eclipsing that in 2025 and through into 2026. So that's what they're talking about for home prices. When it comes to unit sales, they're expecting that is going to increase and they're basing this basically off of 2023, which, well, that was one of the worst years on record nationally that was really felt in Toronto and Vancouver, the prairies in the Atlantic provinces are much different situations, which is why I always say there's no such thing as a Canadian real estate market. We have a bunch of very regional markets in Canada that perform very differently. But Toronto has had a very tough market the last couple of years and Calgary is going through the roof, which is why when I do my monthly Canadian real estate market updates, I break down each individual city and talk about them individually not just everything as a national market. If you do want to keep updated on the Canadian real estate market, well, then you should get subscribed to All Prairie Real Estate. You, the button's right down there so you don't miss those videos when they come out. Right here is my most recent monthly Canadian real estate market update video. If this video was awesome, please give me a like and leave me some comments below because I love chatting with you guys in the comments section. As always, thanks very much for watching.